So now we're getting to the access part of phrase two. Before we go there though, I just want to quickly sort this out. We've now done all our processing on the questionnaire analysis. Now this questionnaire phase two and the original responses that doesn't have any work done on it. This is literally exactly the way you download it from Google Forms. These two need to go into their own folder. So I'm just going to put them into a folder called questionnaires. If you did your questionnaire in Word um, and you typed in your responses yourself, you also need to scan. So instead of this Excel file that proves that you actually have people who responded, you will have, you, you need to scan the questionnaires that people filled in by hand, preferably. Otherwise, you can also leave the hard copies in your file with your teacher. All right, so this is the one we've now worked on. We've got graphs, we've got all our formatting over there, and this is the one that we worked on earlier and that we saved as the one that we will still import. Okay, so now we need to create a database. So we're going to right click new database. You give it a meaningful name, please. And we're going to import this data into that database. Let's just double check that we've got the correct spreadsheet here to import. Yes, this one has no formatting. There can't be a row, an empty row at the top or anything. So we'll have to remove that if there is something like that. All the field names need to be short but clear. There may not be any spaces at the start of any field name. Now I just want to point something out to you. This birth year, birth month, birth day, we don't need it anymore since we have the date of birth, which we worked out with a function. Now, I'm not going to mess up with this spreadsheet, but we're not going to import these three fields. I'll show you how to skip those. The other thing I just want to point out to you is you need to make sure that yes and no is spelled correctly. There can't be a space after yes or something like that. Um, and if you did yours in Afrikaans, you actually need to change all the ya to yes and near to no. And please do that one column at a time. Don't find and replace in the whole spreadsheet. Otherwise, you will replace it as a part of a name, something like that as well. All right, so the spreadsheet is correct. I'm going to close. I don't need to save. And I'm going to open my database. You'll always enable the content. Now we have external data that we want to bring in. So it's importing and it is in Excel format. Let's go find the database or the spreadsheet. We want it into a new table. That's correct. We're doing this specific worksheet, form responses. And the sheet one I used to make the VLOOKUP table, so I'm not going to use that one. Next. Our first row contains column headings. This is incredibly important. If you don't have this, you'll see Access actually brings in the column headings that just says Field 1, Field 2, Field 3. And that's horrible, and you lose a mark for that anyway. Make sure that your first row actually contains the column headings. Next. Now this is where we can choose which fields to import. So birth year, I'm going to skip, birth month, skip, birthday, skip. Right, you can check the data types here, for example, that it's a short text or whatever, but it actually works better, especially with a yes and no, if you do it afterwards. Next. Now, if you did your spreadsheet in Google Forms, there is actually a field that you can use as a primary key. See if you can identify that remembering that a primary key is a unique identifier. So it has to be unique. Everyone has to have one of those and it identifies each record. If you're not sure, you can let Access add your own primary key. Next, name the table. I'm just going to take the one away, but if you want, you can name it something else as well. You never need to save the import steps. Now, it won't actually allow you to close and stop if there was something wrong, for example, a space in front of a, a name of a field. So if you get two tables as a response with some import errors, it will actually show you which field caused the import errors. And then you need to go and look 
and see what was wrong in that field and try it again. All right, this one imported correctly and now all I need to do to get my next mark is to set to make sure that the data types are correct as well as the formatting and the field sizes. So you can do that from your design view or from your data sheet view partially not all of it but I quite like doing the first part in data sheet view so that I can actually see my data. So you can go to table tools fields over here you can go one field at a time and check what data type it has assigned to it automatically as well as things like a field size so my timestamp is date and time the format is this that's fine name surname gender are all short text data types and here they've given my they've given my field size so one of the things you need to change for all every single short text field something you need to change is the field size you need to make the field size an appropriate size for the data that's in there if it's just names the field size really doesn't have to be that big so you have to make it significantly smaller just be careful if it's too small it will cut off some of your data date of birth we then check that the data type is date and time and you need to check that this format actually matches the way the dates display over here and that is correct if whether people knew the term beforehand is short text it's not yes or no because i've got a field in there that's called sort of not or maybe or something like that then those you don't change but this is a simple yes no field i can then change the data type to yes no over here and it's converted it into a yes no field and my number fields check that those have been correct these ones that have a long list of items just leave it as short text make sure that you don't make the field size too small actually make it bigger see what your longest value is and um, figure out how many characters that is and try to make it just a little bit bigger than that okay now the last thing you need to look at is the format and the field sizes for number fields because you can't really change it over here I'll just go to my design view remember you can do it from here or from the bottom right okay so something like my number of pets people just answered that one or two or maybe three or four but it's a single digit so the field size for a number field you can actually make it byte if it's something like this that's so short um, byte I think is 1 to 255 or something uh, it's just it's very low numbers but this is ideal to use byte because it's so short it doesn't have to be that long all right so as soon as you've gone through all your field names make sure that they are clear name and surname must be separate the data type must be correct the format must be correct and the field size must be correct then you're done with this first step